Number 10. Mysterious Whale from between 2014 and 2015, a strange sound was recorded multiple times in the Mariana Trench, specifically a part of the Mariana Trench near Guam, which happens to be one of the largest protected marine areas on the planet. But scientists weren't initially able to identify the bizarre sound. It wasn't like anything they had ever picked up underwater before, suggesting some kind of great beast lurking in the trench. The clearest recording is only about 3.5 seconds long, picked up by an autonomous vehicle. But after a lot of debate and analyzing, researchers have finally come up with an answer for the strange sound. They believe it came from a baleen whale. The problem is that it's a type of whale call that no one's ever heard before. Scientists are used to the moaning of baleen whales, but this particular call sounds a bit too twangy, making the experts really scratch their heads. This could mean one of two things. Either there's an unknown whale moving in and out of the Mariana Trench, or the scientists are wrong. They could have picked up the call of something huge and awful, mistaking it for that of an ordinary whale. We just don't know. Number 9. Zombie Worms the term zombie worms is a little misleading. These bizarre underwater creatures don't eat brains, but rather bones. The real name for the zombie worm is the Osidax worm, a thing that grows between 1 and 3 inches and is often found more than 10,000 feet deep, usually feasting on the rotting carcasses of whales. There are 26 different species of zombie worms, according to the World Register of Marine Species. Some of them have been found in the Mariana Trench. But why do these creepy little worms have such a hunger for animal bones? They don't actually eat the bones, they digest the minerals and fats inside the bones. And they do it in the weirdest way possible. Zombie worms don't have mouths or stomachs, they secrete acid from their skin, dissolving bone until the fat and protein inside is released. Then bacteria living inside the body of the worm digest the fat and protein. What scientists still can't figure out is how the zombie worm gets nutrients from the bacteria. They could digest the bacteria, the bacteria might transfer nutrients somehow into the worm, it's a total mystery. But what we do know is that their only source of food seems to be from skeletons that float to the bottom of the ocean. Ugh. Number 8. Snailfish the snailfish has been caught on video, swimming deeper than any other animal in the world. That makes this tiny fish one of the most interesting creatures ever, with huge fins that look like wings, a head kind of looking like a cartoon dog, and a body that's so fragile it could crumble at the touch of your finger. The snailfish was discovered swimming at 26,700 feet beneath the Pacific Ocean in the Mariana Trench. The international team of marine biologists were on a 30-day expedition to try and capture footage of some of the deepest animals in existence. Well, they succeeded. Alan Jameson from the University of Aberdeen described the snailfish as unlike anything any of the researchers had ever seen before. But they weren't able to collect any samples. They only managed to film the creature by lowering their cameras down into the darkness of the trench. They got over 105 hours of video, also capturing footage of the first ever super giant amphipod. But so far, there's nothing else that can swim as deep as the snailfish. Number 7. Dumbo Octopus the Dumbo octopus is one of the weirdest things that lives in the Mariana Trench. It's called Dumbo because of the big fins protruding from the sides of its mantle, making it look like it has huge ears. But the truth is that this octopus is extraordinarily small. It's only about 8 inches large with short arms, pale colors, and a body shaped like a bell. It spends the majority of its time hovering over the seafloor like some kind of tiny spaceship, scooping up creatures with its stubby arms. And even though Though it's weird, it's also been titled the cutest cephalopod in all of the world. The Dumbo octopus lives at an extreme depth in the Mariana Trench, as well as other parts of the ocean, 13,000 feet beneath the surface. According to National Geographic, that makes it the deepest living octopus ever discovered. Its primary source of nutrition includes snails and worms, which it snatches from the seafloor. Number 6. A Megalodon with all the recent public fascination with the Megalodon, you may have found yourself wondering if these ancient creatures really do exist. I mean, still exist. Right now, on Earth. Lucky for you, I'm here to give you the full scoop on whether there really is a prehistoric Megalodon. Maybe even a whole family of them. 
living in the Mariana Trench. After all, it's the deepest, least explored part of the ocean, so who's to say a giant 60-foot shark couldn't be living somewhere down in the darkness? Sorry to get your hopes up, but there probably isn't. Modern science says the Megalodon went extinct somewhere around 3 million years ago. If a shark of its size was still around, we would have found it. And here's the number one piece of evidence. Look at the creatures on today's list. They're tiny. For a beast the size of a megalodon to live in the Mariana Trench, it would need ample food. It would need creatures the size of whales swimming everywhere just to keep itself alive. For a megalodon to find itself a stable food source, it would need to rise 8,000 feet up from the darkest part of the Mariana Trench to where humans could easily see it. Are you convinced by this argument, or do you still believe there could be a Megalodon hiding deep in the Mariana Trench? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Creepy Jellyfish A new and very creepy jellyfish has been spotted deep down in the Mariana Trench. Experts are saying that the creature could be an entirely new species of animal never before seen on the planet. It was found at the Enigma Seamount, 12,139 feet beneath the surface of the water. The unknown jellyfish was spotted floating motionless, its tentacles outstretched and its bell totally still. This suggests it was in predator mode, waiting to ambush another sea creature that got close enough to its tentacles. The jellyfish is a weird mixture of red and yellow, with its tentacles seemingly glowing purple. Experts with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the ones who found the animal, were able to identify it as belonging to the genus Crossoda, but they're clueless as to its species. Because they don't have anything to go on except video footage, it's very difficult for them to properly analyze this new animal. Plus, they've only ever seen one of them. It could be a totally new species or just a variant of one we already know about. What do you think? Four, the Plastic Crustacean The Eurythenes plasticus is a newly identified species of amphipod found in the Mariana Trench, approximately 20,000 feet deep. As you might have recognized from its name, this deep-sea crustacean was named after plastic, polyethylene in particular. This is because pieces of plastic were actually found inside the animal's guts. It's a creature that lives in the deepest part of the ocean, yet it seems to be eating tiny plastic pieces of plastic resin that we use here on the surface in fibers for clothing, in bottles for your favorite drink, and in food packaging. Its name was given by researcher Alan Jameson and his team hoping to draw some awareness to the increasing issue of plastic pollution in the environment. The animal itself is also quite interesting even without the plastic. It looks exactly like a pill bug that you might find in your garden except bigger, so white it's almost transparent, and a whole lot creepier. Number 3. Deep Sea Hatchetfish the deep sea hatchetfish has evolved to live in the darkest depths of the ocean. That means the Mariana Trench. This freakish looking fish, looking as though its jaw is hanging down nearly three times the size of its body, is one of the most tragic things you'll ever lay eyes on. There's just something about looking straight into the face of a marine hatchetfish that makes you feel as if you're looking into the face of a lost soul swimming through a dark abyss. But besides looking like a soul trapped in limbo, the hatchetfish is actually pretty cool. It remains constantly invisible in the pitch darkness of the ocean thanks to its slender shape and reflective scales. It also has organs on its belly that emit light to conceal its shadow. This means anything below the hatchetfish cannot see it, whereas the hatchetfish can see other fish swimming above it. This allows it to hunt effectively while evading some of the more violent predators within the darkest place in the ocean. Number 2. Ping Pong Tree Sponge The ping pong tree sponge can be found in the shallower part of the Mariana Trench at a depth of around 8,800 feet. It's a flesh-eating sponge covered in transparent ping pong balls. It can grow to be over 20 inches tall with its body composed of a thin stalk. At the top of the stalk is what looks like an array of globes. These globes, or ping pong balls, are covered in very small hooks called spicules. These hooks work just like fishing hooks to capture unsuspecting creatures 
creatures moving past the sponge. The hooks trap small fish and other tiny crustaceans that accidentally touch the ping pongs, trapping them as if they got stuck to Velcro. As the prey tries to struggle and get free, the cells inside the sponge begin to consume tiny fragments of it while it's still living. It's a slow and honestly horrifying process in which the sponge gradually absorbs its victim one cell at a time. It doesn't actually have a digestive cavity or a stomach, so it has to absorb whatever poor thing gets stuck to its ping pong ball. Number 1. The Frilled Shark the frilled shark is by far one of the most frightening predators that lives in the Mariotta Trench. It hunts by lunging at a potential piece of prey, swallowing it whole, and then allowing it to digest. It looks weirdly like a prehistoric eel mixed with a very small sea serpent. It can grow to be over 7 feet long, and it gets its name from the oddly frilly appearance of its gills. Its favorite food is squid, it has rows of long and pointy teeth, each one having three points that it uses for snagging the soft bodies of its preferred victims. And even though it prefers squid, the frilled shark will eat pretty much anything that gets near it, even other sharks. So anything that swims in its way, better watch out. The issue with the frilled shark is that scientists have only seen a handful of them. They are very rarely encountered in the wild, meaning scientists don't even know their whole range. We do know that they live in the darkest parts of the ocean, like in the Mariotta Trench, but we don't know how many exist. There could be hundreds, or there could be thousands. The only time a frilled shark has been brought to the surface has been when one accidentally gets tangled in a fishing net, and that happens very rarely. According to Oceana, scientists consider these deep predators to be either close to extinction or at least near threatened. What's your favorite creepy creature from the Mariotta Trench? Number 8. The Rivalry of Ancient Aztec Gods Could bones discovered at the ruins of Mexico's Templo Mayor be evidence of ritual sacrifices to ancient gods? Archaeologists who were excavating at a circular platform at the main Aztec temple found a mysterious box. Inside the box were the remains of a child who experts believe was sacrificed. The temple is located in what was once known as Tenochtitlan, the religious and political capital of the Aztecs prior to Spanish conquerors' arrival in the region in 1521. Before that, a 15-story pyramid stood at the site, and that's where the box filled with Aztec offerings was found. Other things found within the box were an ornamental jaguar emblazoned with an emblem celebrating the war and sun god, Huitzilopochtli, along with starfish, coral, and seashells, and a bird that had also been sacrificed. Experts believe the bird's sacrifice was done as a way to symbolize the descent of Aztec warriors into the afterlife. Even though the discovery of the child's body stunned researchers, it may have also given them insight into the creation myth of these ancient people. The Aztec culture had multiple gods. One of these gods, Miklantecutli, ruled the deepest realm of the underworld. In the Aztec creation myth, there are multiple cycles of the sun, with each one ending in destruction. In order to repopulate the earth, humans must be recreated over and over again. When the god Quetzalcoatl traveled to the underworld, he was met by Miklantecutli, who challenged him to travel around the world four times blowing a conch shell before being allowed to remove the bones he needed. Although Miklantecutli tricked him, Quetzalcoatl was successful. When he took the bones he'd worked to remove, Miklantecutli tried to stop him by digging a pit to trap the god. Quetzalcoatl fell inside, breaking the bones he was carrying into various sizes, which is how the Aztecs explain that people today are of all different heights. Some experts think this could be why the sacrificial child, who was dressed to look like the sun god, Huitzilopochtli, was found at the foot of the pyramid to appease the ancient gods, maybe even as an offering or blessing for three Aztec kings who were rumored to have been buried near the great temple. These discoveries offer real-world ties to ancient beliefs that ruled the Aztec world and the rituals performed to appease the gods. Number 7 Humans Hunted Mammoths in Mexico 
Discovering the remains of any woolly mammoth is a remarkable thing that can make the career of any archaeologist. But when a research team found a treasure trove of bones in central Mexico, they didn't expect to uncover the terrifying way the animals died. The bones of at least 14 mammoths were discovered in an area that was being prepared for the building of a new airport in Mexico City. Over 800 individual bones were uncovered in two different underground traps, but it's how they got there that really interested archaeologists. As they were carefully to remove the bones, the research team from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History realized the bones had been discarded in a pit that was 5.5 feet deep and 80 feet wide. At the time, mammoths roamed the area. There were five different herds living alongside camels and horses. In fact, one of each of these two species were found in the same pit where the mammoth bones were discovered. Up until this find, scientists believe most mammoths died after falling into swamps and were too injured to pull themselves out, but the discovery showed that hunter-gatherers were organized and cunning enough to dig the massive pits to capture mammoths for sustenance. Some scientists even believe larger groups of 20 to 30 hunters would herd the mammoths toward the pit, using torches and branches to scare the animal into going where the other hunters were waiting. One of the mammoth specimens showed signs of an attack, with wounds and healed fractures in their bones, meaning the animal was hunted for years before it was later captured. The research team's discovery of the two different traps could also mean the hunters made multiple large pits in case the mammoths managed to dodge the first. To find out more about how local hunter-gatherers interacted with these massive herbivores, researchers will continue to comb through the hundreds of individual bones for more clues about how the mammoths died. Number 6. Cannibal Explorers in the mid-1800s, an expedition by the British Navy set out to find a sea route through the Canadian Arctic to the Orient. Sadly, the voyage was doomed from the start, with elements causing havoc and putting the men at risk when the ocean froze and they became stranded, unable to move their ships. But a new study done on bones found in the area suggests that being icebound wasn't their only problem. The 129 men of the Franklin expedition were so desperate for food that they may have resorted to cannibalism in order to survive. The strange thing about the new study is that the teams expected to be stuck for multiple winters. They'd loaded their ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror, with enough food to last them as they sailed through the Canadian archipelago on their way through the Northwest Passage. So, why did they resort to cannibalism? Even in the summer months, the seas were filled with enough heavy sea ice that the ships remained stuck, which could be why the men set out on foot on a 1,000-mile trek toward the nearest Hudson Bay trading post. Sadly, they would never make it there. Over time, stories of crew members setting out on their own filtered through local Inuit communities until a Canadian mapmaker heard whispers of cannibalism, where locals described seeing piles of fractured human bones out on the ice. As scientists set out to study the remote area, they found countless bones from the ill-fated crew members, with many cut marks on the bones, telltale signs that the men resorted to cannibalizing their fellow crewmates to survive the harsh conditions. A study done by Canadian anthropologists found signs of breakage on the bones, as well as signs the bones had been heated in boiling water to extract their marrow. It might seem like a shocking thing to have done, but experts think the men may have been suffering from scurvy or lead poisoning, which would have at the very least made them feel desperate enough to resort to cannibalism as their only way to make it out alive. Sadly, none of the men survived, and even though researchers have found some of the remains, no one can truly know what happened on the doomed expedition. Number 5 alien-shaped skulls. Even the most experienced archaeologist comes across something terrifying from time to time. 
when a group of scientists unearthed skeletons with warped, alien-shaped heads in Mexico, they were understandably shocked. But could the skeletons belong to some creature from another planet? The cemetery where the alien-like beings were found was discovered by residents of a small village called Onavas in the state of Sonora. It was the first pre-Hispanic cemetery found in the state and contained 25 human burials. But these weren't ordinary skeletons. 13 had their skulls deformed into elongated pointed shapes at the top. But that wasn't the only surprise in store for the archaeologists. As they continued to unearth the remains, they realized the other five bodies had mutilated teeth that had been filed into strange shapes. The practice of shaping the heads is known as cranial deformation, and shockingly, it starts in childhood, when wooden boards are tied with cloth to a child's skull, something that has been done in different cultures around the world as a type of ritual practice. Strangely, all of the bodies found in the cemetery belong to children between 5 months and 16 years of age, and only one of the bodies belonged to a female. A number of the skeletons also had earrings, nose rings, or other jewelry made from seashells and snails. The strange burial customs add to the mystery of the discovery, with experts wondering why the bodies were buried together. Whether the ancient Mesoamericans believed their children were some higher being or they performed the cranial mutilations to emulate some kind of futuristic entity, it will take more work from archaeologists to uncover the true origin of the society's customs. Why do you think different cultures adopted this strange tradition? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Number 4. Mutilated Vampires the discovery of mutilated bodies in a Polish cemetery by archaeologists might have a chilling connection, but does it point to the existence of vampires? At the edge of a small village on the German border, a cemetery containing brutally mutilated bodies from the 13th and 14th centuries was unearthed back in 2016. When experts took a closer look at the remains, they found punctures on the spines, one skeleton with its head wedged between two stones, and another of the bodies that had been decapitated. One of the bodies belonging to a woman had even been buried face down with both of her knees broken. But why were these people buried in such horrific ways when all of the other bodies in the cemetery were buried normally? Sadly, something more chilling than blood-sucking vampires could explain why the victims of the brutal burials were targeted. One of the bodies showed signs of a bone condition that would have made her hunch over and might have made her fellow villagers think she was some sort of monster. Studies show that people who look differently than everyone else were sometimes the targets of attacks. In medieval times when cholera infected so many, anyone who died first during an outbreak was also believed to be at risk of becoming a vampire, which may be another reason they were singled out. Some thought the dead would rise from their graves intent on feeding on the blood of anyone who crossed their path, so it makes sense that villagers believed cutting off the heads or breaking the legs of the dead would prevent the vampire from harming anyone. Unfortunately, this doesn't make it any less gruesome. Even though it might not prove that vampires in fact existed, the people of the times believe they did. Because of this belief, they adopted the strange and gruesome method of burying their dead. Number 3. Pit of Severed Arms when an archaeological survey team started excavations for a new property development in Bergheim, France, they uncovered a five-acre area filled with ancient pits known as silos. It was a remarkable find, but when they dug a little deeper, they made the chilling discovery of human bones in 14 of the pits they had unearthed. Another pit had an even worse secret to tell. It was filled to the top with human bones, all with cut signs or amputation marks made with a knife or axe. Archaeologists think the remains, the oldest of which date back over 5,000 years, belong to farmers who lived in the area. Over time, more bodies were placed in the pit, with the remains ranging in age from children to adults. The violent end to so many could point to the possibility of a war, or some other incident that led to the brutal deaths. 
Originally, experts thought Neolithic people led a more serene life. The discovery of the bone-filled pits, however, shows that even in ancient times, early humans had conflict and used violence to solve it. Most of the bones uncovered were severed arms, hands, and fingers, but some of the remains belonged to children, one that was less than a year old. Another more gruesome find was the skull belonging to a middle-aged man with a severe fracture that could have only come from a violent attack. Experts researching the pits in France think their discovery was from a battle instead of a brutal form of justice at the hands of ancient people. Number 2. Books Bound in Human Skin it might sound like something out of a horror movie, but in libraries across the world, there are books bound in human skin. The bizarre practice started in the 19th century, but recent discoveries show that the grisly method was a popular one. In 2014, a book owned by the Harvard University Library was confirmed by scientists to have been bound in human skin. Known as Anthropodermic Bibliopegy, the practice is a macabre one that many people still don't understand. Most of these books, and yes, there are multiple books bound this way, had been created by 19th century doctors who had access to bodies that were being used in universities to practice dissection. The book found at Harvard was covered with the skin of a female mental patient who died of natural causes. It's called Destinies of the Soul and was given by a writer named Arsène Husay to a doctor who agreed to perform the macabre binding. Shockingly, there are other books that have been bound this way. One was made from the skin of the first man hanged at the Bristol Jail in the UK, with the details of his crime inside the book itself. Another book was made from the skin of a murdered man named William Burke, who, along with his partner William Hare, originally worked as resurrectionists or those who dug up bodies to sell to medical schools. Instead, the man began killing people and sold the bodies. After he was executed, a book was bound in Burke's skin, and it's now displayed in the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh's museum. For some reason, the hype surrounding books bound in the skin of criminals became a popular fad in the 19th century. Whether it was a macabre fascination or people got vicarious excitement from seeing books made this way, it's a truly horrifying practice that, thankfully, has gone out of style. Number 1. Neanderthal Family Slaughter Sometimes, the best way to get a glimpse into the past is to use modern technology. That's what a group of researchers of Barcelona's Institute of Evolutionary Biology did when they wanted to get a closer look at multiple sets of Neanderthal bones found in a cave in northern Spain. What they found when they examined the remains were the telltale signs of cannibal activity. The family of 12 were killed almost 50,000 years before experts discovered them, but hints to their downfall were obvious, with cut marks on their skulls and jawbones that indicated their tongues had been removed. The bones were also fragmented, which meant that whoever killed the family did so to remove and eat the marrow. To find out more about the family, experts conducted genetic testing that showed the three men in the cave were all from the same family, while the women all had different familial origins. There were also three boys in their early teens and three children between the ages of two and nine found alongside the others. The most shocking thing is that all of the bodies had evidence of cannibal activity, meaning whoever came across them butchered the entire group. With no evidence of fire around the bodies, the unfortunate family members were all eaten soon after they were killed. As grim as it is, the discovery shows the measures Neanderthals took to survive the brutal winners, one that meant doing whatever it took to survive, even resorting to something as taboo as cannibalism. Number 8. Lowland Mummy In 1978, a researcher was searching for ancient settlements in China when he uncovered a mummy in the Tarim Basin. 
But this wasn't any ordinary mummy, and it wasn't the only one found there. Over time, more than 100 mummies have been discovered in four different areas of the basin, and there's something about them that stumped experts. Some of the mummies date back to over 4,000 years ago, when Westerners weren't believed to have visited the foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains. Adding to the mystery, many of the mummies were clothed and buried in a way that was more common in European countries than in China. But the most surprising thing about the mummies is that they're all Caucasian, with red or blonde hair, similar to the traders described in writings from Pliny the Elder as being tall with flaxen hair and blue eyes. Could these mummies belong to the people described in his ancient texts? All of the bodies are remarkably well preserved, even better preserved than some ancient Egyptian mummies. So did the embalmer have a secret that helped keep the bodies looking like they'd only just been buried despite being placed there thousands of years ago? Experts think the area where they were laid to rest is what kept the mummies looking so lifelike, especially considering they weren't actually embalmed but naturally preserved. The site is on the edge of the Taklamakan Desert, whose hot climate and rocky soil helped to naturally embalm the bodies, even though they should have decomposed hundreds of years ago. Many of the mummies were also dressed in elaborate clothes, items that were not customary as clothing in China. One had a red tunic with gold embroidery and a lavish gold foil burial mask. Others that were found wearing large black pointed hats have been nicknamed the Witches of Subeshi for their close resemblance to historical accounts of European witches. But it's the remarkable preservation that has stunned experts, and Lulin, a female mummy who died on the Silk Road trade route that linked China with the West, who has captured the attention of historians. Nicknamed the Lulin Beauty, her features were so well preserved, she still looked beautiful, even in death. But it was difficult for experts to study Lulin and other mummies. Controversy erupted when experts wanted to recover the bodies. Local members of the Uyghur people claimed to be their descendants and didn't want their ancestors disturbed. But experts were able to collect genetic material to reveal the true identity of the mummies. They ended up having DNA that tied them to Europeans, most likely Siberians, as well as people from Mesopotamia and Europe. As experts continued to piece together Lulin's story, they pinpointed her to be around 40 to 45 years old at the time of her death. They also believe she died from inhaling massive amounts of pollution from open fires and sand in the air. Despite her sad end, she was well clothed, leading experts to conclude that she and many of the other mummies were textile merchants who were buried with the very goods they'd traveled along the Silk Road to sell to the Chinese. Even though some scholars teach that many ancient cultures didn't travel far from home and stayed with their own people, the discovery of Lulin and the other mummies shows how many cultures explored the world and traveled further than previously thought. Number 7 the Mysterious Yan Kingdom The discovery of a significant number of artifacts at a site near Beijing has provided archaeologists a glimpse into the lives of an ancient kingdom that once ruled China. In 2019, the site was excavated to reveal earthen city walls, human remains, and vast burial areas that are more than 3,000 years old. Five ancient tombs were among the sites unearthed, and inside, experts found more than 100 ancient relics, including seashells, pottery, ivory objects, and silks. Some of the earliest known human beings, later rising into a superpower that ruled China, inhabited the area around Beijing in prehistoric times. But it's the discovery of a bronze wine vessel that might be the clue experts need to uncover the story of the Yan Kingdom. Experts think the words inscribed on the sides of the vessel are a testimonial of Beijing's construction history stretching back more than 3,000 years. The priceless artifacts were almost lost to the elements when flooding decades ago threatened to destroy the site and its secrets. Fortunately, they survived, leading to a wealth of knowledge and further mystery. Experts believe that the relic site was the capital of the Yan Kingdom during the Western Zhao Dynasty from 1046 to 771 BC. It was one of the largest regional states, one that saw Beijing as its capital for eight centuries, and today it stands as one of the oldest inhabited areas in the world. 
Over time, Beijing has seen so many changes. It has had a number of different names over its history, including Dadu and Beiping, before settling on its current and 16th name of Beijing. With seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites located there, it's clear to see how the city that started as a miter settlement grew into one of the world's biggest cultural powerhouses. The city boasts the Great Wall, the longest defensive wall in the world, the Forbidden City, the largest and best preserved imperial palace in the world, and Temple of Heaven, one of the holiest of imperial temples in China. But not a lot is known about its original ruling dynasty, founded by the Duke of Shao, and that's because many of the records through the first nine generations after the death of the Duke were destroyed. With the personal names of most rulers of Yan unknown, discoveries like the artifacts at the relic site in Beijing are important pieces that will help unravel the mystery of this ancient dynasty. Number 6. Mayan Blueprint What's lurking under the landscape of modern-day Mexico might surprise you. Anthropologists are thrilled to have discovered hundreds of ancient ceremonial sites that once belonged to the Maya civilization. Almost 500 of these complexes have been found using LIDAR, a laser system that surveys the land from the air to detect three-dimensional structures buried beneath plants and trees. One of the massive structures, Aguada Phoenix, stretches for almost a mile and is one one of the largest, oldest, ancient Mayan structures ever found. Researchers think it dates to around 10,000 to 800 BCE, and stunningly, it has been hiding in plain sight all this time. The modern-day Mexicans living on top of the complex without even knowing it. Even though it stretches almost 4,600 feet, it is a flat area, which could be why locals didn't even realize what was right beneath their feet or the historical significance of the vast complex. Among the structures, there are nine wide causeways that extend from a massive rectangular platform, as well as other smaller complexes and artificial water reservoirs. Even though many other similar structures exist across the ancient Mayan world, this one is different. Other nearby complexes that were once home to the Olmec people, the first major civilization in Mexico, had stone sculptures of people which experts say showed that they had a hierarchy where people of higher status had more power. At Aguada Phoenix, there's only been one stone statue found, and it was of an animal. As experts continue to study the LiDAR images, they do see similarities to these structures and those found in other ancient Olmec cities. They all seem to have a similar structure to the one found at Aguada Phoenix, with one main rectangular plaza flanked by edge platforms. By comparing the data from this and other sites, experts now see a direct connection between Mesoamerican cultures who lived at different times and passed down their influences to build their most important ceremonial sites. It offers a unique blueprint that can help archaeologists as they continue to seek out hidden mysteries of the Maya that are still waiting to be discovered. Have you ever visited any ancient Mayan ruins? If you have, share your experience in the comments section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. Number 5. The Dashka Stone when a Russian professor discovered an ancient stone slab in the South Ural Mountains in 1999, he didn't realize his find would be so controversial. It all started when Alexander Chuvrov, a professor of mathematics and physics, came across a report detailing 200 white stone slabs initially uncovered in the 18th century. Chuvrov was determined to find the slabs and he set out an expedition, but it was a tip from a local resident who had a stone in his garden that sounded suspiciously like those in the 18th century archives that really put the professor on the right track. When Chuvrov visited the home of the villager, he was stunned to find a stone tablet measuring 58 inches high and 41 inches wide, with strange lines that he soon realized was a map of the nearby Ural Mountains. As Chuvrov studied the Dashka stone, nicknamed after his granddaughter, he soon realized the strange markings were in fact a map written in an unknown language. Even stranger, they were a three-dimensional representation of specific
majestic parts of the nearby Ural Mountains. It included dams, irrigation canals, and other features that could only be seen by air. Ancient seashells embedded in the stone made its age somewhat easier to determine, with one shell at least 500 million years old and another around 120 million years old. Three local rivers were also shown on the map, leading experts to believe it was created as a navigation tool. Modern researchers have compared the map to modern computerized military maps. Its striking similarity makes the Dashka Stone one of the most controversial discoveries in Russia. One that is ancient, but that seems to have been created with knowledge that was far ahead of its time. One of its nicknames is Map the Creator, but who the map's creator was or how he or she was able to create such a detailed three-dimensional map is a mystery that researchers will continue to try and solve. How do you think the map was created? Feel free to share your theories in the comments. Number four, Aphrodite Temple. A mysterious inscription on an ancient temple was the first clue that Turkish researchers had stumbled across something important. Located on the Erla Çeşme Peninsula, the structure would end up being identified as one used by cult followers of the ancient Greek goddess Aphrodite. Experts found an inscription on the building reading, This is a sacred place giving them the first clue that they had discovered something special. Only when the research team uncovered a statue of a woman and terracotta female head did they realize what they'd located. The ruins of the 5th century BC temple are evidence that at one time, a cult to the goddess of the sea, fertility, beauty, and love was worshipped in the region. Like many other Greek deities, there are multiple origin stories for Aphrodite. One story says she was born from the sea foam after the titan Cronus killed his father Uranus and threw his genitals into the sea. But Homer believed Aphrodite was the daughter of Zeus and Dione, a consort to Zeus. Aphrodite was also known to have many lovers, including Ares, who was the Greek god of war, and Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Maybe her many lovers is why prostitutes in ancient Greece considered her their patron saint. The temple was originally discovered in 2016, but at that time, experts also found tumuli. Ancient burial mounds where notable people of society were located. Nearby, they also found caves which were also used as sacred areas by Greeks who moved into the area around 8000 BC for its proximity to the sea, bringing with them their customs, traditions, and devotion to their ancient goddess. Number three. Ancient Viking Stone For more than 100 years, the inscriptions on an ancient Viking stone have baffled scientists. More than 700 inscriptions on the 8-foot-high rock rune stone are believed to be the first examples of written literature in Sweden. But there's just one problem. They're encoded. Now, a select group of codebreakers think they have cracked the mystery of what's written on the ancient tablet. It wasn't as easy as simply figuring out the code and translating the text. The inscriptions are written in riddles, so not only does one have to be able to decode the symbols, they also have to know a little bit about a type of Old Norse poetry. Known as skaldic poetry, the verses are written with elaborate descriptions to describe scenes. The inscriptions are also written in partial ciphers with runes or symbols that stand for several letters of the alphabet. With such an elaborate method needed to decipher the message, experts have believed for years that the text must describe ancient battles of the warrior culture. Instead, the group who now claim to have deciphered the text think the poem describes the Vikings' warnings of a climate disaster that struck the Americas in 536 to 47 AD. But could the ancient Vikings really have carved the stone with a warning of something that happened halfway across the world? Maybe so. Volcanic eruptions blanketed the skies with thick ash blocking out the sun, abruptly cooling temperatures in the northern hemisphere and disturbing entire ecosystems, including those in Sweden where the stone was found. The damage was so bad that nearly half the population of Scandinavia died. Even though the stone wasn't carved until hundreds of years after the event, it's obvious that the impact left its mark on the Vikings so much that they carved the rock rune stone for future generations to heed their warning. 
So how did experts crack the code of the rock rune stone? By combining archaeology, history, and runology, they were able to unlock the inscription. Deciphering the riddles is proving to be more of a challenge though. One look at one of the many verses makes it clear that it will take some ingenuity to figure out what the Vikings meant. The first describes the retelling of the Viking apocalypse known as Ragnarok. In the story, a giant wolf swallows the sun, which turns the sky red and the sun black. Some scholars think it could be an artistic retelling of how the skies looked after the volcanic eruption in America, and how its effects could be felt in Sweden. Whether the tablets describe a mythological occurrence or are an artistic interpretation of real things that happened at the time the Vikings created them, the discovery of the rock rune stone and its mysterious carvings continues to keep scholars hunting for clues to their purpose. Number 2. Istanbul Train Station Treasures Haider Pasha train station is a main travel hub for visitors and commuters in Istanbul. Over the last three years, excavations have unearthed many exciting new discoveries, ones with ties to ancient times and some connected to the not-so-distant past. Recent excavations have revealed items with ties to World War II, including concrete platforms and a 1,312-foot-long bunker built in 1942, unearthed at the 74-acre facility. Ancient mass graves with 28 bodies and a mausoleum were also discovered inside a section of St. Basa Church, an important ruin from the Byzantine era. More remarkable finds, including the ruins from a holy spring, a stone brick workshop with a furnace and pots that date back to the 5th and 6th centuries AD, as well as 12,000 gold, silver, and bronze coins from the 5th century BC were also found. The further researchers dig, the more history they seem to unearth. Traces of the Hellenistic, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman periods have been found in all layers of the earth. With only 50% of all planned excavations completed, locals are getting anxious for work to be completed. But with archaeologists, art historians, and conservationists working to remove every important artifact so they aren't damaged, it's going to take some time. By the time they're finished, all of the remarkable treasures will be showcased at a planned archaeological park, spotlighting how varied the discoveries are and celebrating decades of history at the site. Number 1. Ancient Quarry in Sculpture Workshop in 1890, an explorer named Felix von Lucien found a basalt quarry and stone sculptures in the southern Gaziantep province of Turkey. This discovery was just the tip of the iceberg, at a place where new discoveries continue to thrill archaeologists to this day. Initial excavations between 1958 and 1961 revealed 300 finished or partially completed stone sculptures including lions, sphinx, and mountain gods. As experts surveyed the remarkable finds, they realized they'd uncovered a stone sculpture workshop now known as Yesemek, the largest stone quarry and statue processing worksite of the Near East. Experts think it was a hub of activity between the 4th quarter of the 2000 BC and 8th century BC. Between 1375 and 133 BC, the area was ruled by the Hittites, an ancient group of Indo-Europeans who moved into Asia Minor and formed an empire at modern-day Turkey. During that time, the site was home to all phases of the sculpting process. Stones were cut from the quarry and transported for preparation, where masons sketched and carved their statues. Some of the sketches are still visible on the unfinished pieces today, giving insight into the master masons and their creative process that has stood the test of time. The artisans combined various styles in their handiwork, including influences from Hittite, Syrian, and Assyrian elements to create what is now known as Orientalism. Nearly 300 sketches and statues are on display in a unique open-air museum at the site. Among the artworks there are sphinxes and war scene reliefs, with many of the other statues depicting gate lions, sitting lions, and winged lions, popular motifs in local culture. As recently as 2021, new statues were still being unearthed at Yesemek, the largest and oldest sculpture workshop in the region. One that is a testament to the lasting artistry of some of the area's first sculptors. Thanks for watching. 
Which one of these mysterious discoveries fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye!